Okay, so today I'm gonna be doing a little bit of uh, taking a circle and putting it into to a square. <laughs> so I am kind of frustrated with Weber. I, I bought this Weber Performer secondhand off of Craigslist. I reached out to Weber to try to get the hardware so that I could put it together because the hardware was missing from my actual performer box so it's been i feel like almost a year it was like late last summer i bought it but i'm going to take this commercial stainless steel worktop and i'm going to cut a hole in it and we're going to get the performer bottom affixed to it and we're going to run it like it was the table so watch me work hey yo this is dash <laughs> Get ready. So here's my stainless top. Now my plan was to put this on here like so. Hmm. What I didn't realize was this is actually almost as big as the cooktop itself. So what I'm gonna end up having to do is cut this pretty much as close to the edge as I can I wanted it on this edge because I figured where I'm going to put this, where there's Sammy, then there's Tracy, then this grill will go. So I figured it would go on the end. So I wanted the table to be on this side and the actual grill to be on this side. So, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make this work just because of the fact that it is as big as it is. So what I might just end up having to do is move in and over because there's a structural piece down at the bottom here. So I'll take a measurement underneath. It looks like I'll probably move over five inches or so. And then from this edge, oh, it might not be a problem. I'll move in an inch and from here an inch and I'll kind of connect the dots and we'll go from here. Okay, so let's recap quickly. So what I did was I came five inches from the end because there is a brace on the underside of here. And of course, there is a brace right under where I marked my center. So I came five inches from the end and then this table is from end to end 24 inches wide. So this is a mark 12 inches in, five inches in, 12 inches in the middle. And then I did 22 and a half inches and I'm sorry, the light is reflecting. So, but there's my end there. So I made a compass just out of a piece of wire. You saw me guys, you saw me twist that up and get that situated. So now I'm gonna get a marker and we're gonna just trace this down and around. We're gonna make our circle. I'm gonna drill a hole and we'll get this cut out.
All right, so here's the, uh, the support I was talking about. I thought that this support went all the way to the edge. It really doesn't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, and it's just tacked in. So I'm gonna uh, cut the tacks out. Hopefully I can get this out pretty easily. So that was easy enough to get out. Now, the problem I had and what ended up happening was the blade hit the underside of the shelf here. So I'm just gonna try to be more careful. All right, so I was able to get the whole cut, and uh, at this point, before I cut myself, I'm gonna try to, to sand down the edges just to make them a little smoother, and therefore I won't have any problems. Oh. Kinda gotta plug this in first, right? So the top is, that's much better. So, here goes nothing. I gotta get these out, give me a second. Okay, so we're close. And the reason where I need to do some adjusting slightly is because in the front where I fit this. So actually, I can't tell if it's holding on from the bottom of the shelf or if it's holding on from the top. I think it's holding on from the bottom. I might have to bend that out slightly or just force it down in there and let it ride. Let's try this again. Yeah, it's the lower shelf that's actually binding me up, not the, all right. So we're pretty darn close. I'm pretty close here with getting this put in and where I'm getting hung up is the rolled edge on the underside of the shelf. And I don't actually mind that. Uh, yep, it's definitely the rolled edge on the underside of the shelf. I'm thinking that'll be a good, or that'll be good because because it'll help 
keep everything pretty much in line here. It's a, it's a good hold on that bottom side, and I'm not mad at it. I think I'm going to twist the this in here slightly. I'm trying to keep this starter port, uh, the one that, that comes with the with it, but I, I think I might just uh, forego it and uh, force this thing down in here, and we might be pretty much ready to go. I'm gonna get some bolts, drill some holes, and we'll bolt the top to the table. So I'm trying to now just get my orientation right before I mark where I'm gonna drill holes. Because the ash handle is down in the front here. All right, so I think I'm gonna have to make a audible and change the orientation of how I want this uh, mounted. Because of the fact that the Weber should be mounted on the left side of the table, I'm going to probably gonna end up having to do it on the left side of the table as well. Just because it will help with the orientation of the, the ash drain and you know all of those things like that. So unfortunately, but I am gonna twist it slightly so that the handle or the, the mounting plates, I can actually use them as opposed to them being, if they were straight up, straight in the front. Uh, actually, I think because of the fact that we have such good purchase on the, with the, uh, with the table itself, I don't even think I'm gonna have to screw it down. There is a decent air gap in here. Yeah. There's a decent air gap and I think I'm probably going to just send one or two sheet metal screws into this plate, maybe a little off from where it actually attaches. But I like the way that this looks and yeah. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and get this mounted up. Now, <laughs> this is from what I've been told, this is a bit tricky. So, I watched a video from one of you guys, Ricer. Ricer had a video out talking about how to get this little ring attached to the bottom of the, well, he had a, a video talking about how to assemble a Weber all together. So if you haven't, actually I'm gonna leave that video down below it was an excellent video. I'm taking this tip directly from his video in that you just kind of got to force this thing in here and it'll flex and it'll bend. Don't worry about it, you'll be all right. So let's see how long it takes me to get this in. There's one side. There's two sides. Three sides. Whew. Don't be afraid to flex it. That's what it took. And now my handle lines up perfectly to where it needs to be. I'm not using the legs, obviously. And I'm gonna get this back into the grill or into the table. And I think that's pretty much it. I'm trying to debate if I'm going to actually, like I said, send a, a sheet metal screw or two into here. I, I don't think I need to. I'm about to say screw it and uh, maybe I'll put one or two in there. All right, so my homemade compass worked pretty well. My my uh, cutout is pretty even. And like I said, there is a bit of an air gap, which is good. There's a light, so you can see down on this edge. But I think that looks pretty good. And so this is how the, the it's hanging off the table here. But, 
and I left this on because I would like to try and fit up I would like to try to fit up the table the original accessory to be able to start the charcoal so I guess once I have it set up it'll be easier to see exactly how to do that but I would like to have that set up still since it is there So I guess I'm done here out in the garage. You guys saw me get this, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what this, I guess this cover or end plate front cap. I don't know what to call it. Doesn't really matter. I got it up or set up here. It has a little tool shelf. And then of course it has the igniter uh, for the, the little one pound propane bottle. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this up to my house, to the side of the house. And I guess we'll do final assembly up there. I'll be back. All right, so unfortunately, it looks like we're just a little bit too short. So I will uh, look in back into that at a later date, but it, all right, so check it out. There is the table. It looks really good. It's, it's pretty high with the wheels on it. So I'm trying to debate whether I'm gonna take the wheels off just to drop it down, because that looks like it has it up about probably another four inches or so. All right, check it out. The table looks pretty good. So at this point, all that's left to do is to season it. Then I'm gonna cook something. You know that. Usually whenever you get a new grill or something like that, I recommend that you cook chicken. Today I'm gonna make an exception. We kinda all know how Weber's work. At least I do, I've had a couple of them. But remember a few weeks back, Steve sent out some seasoning I got some steaks earlier. I'm gonna go ahead, get this seasoned, and I'm gonna cook some steaks. See y'all in the next video. Thank you so very much, as always, for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video goes live. If you like what you saw, if you learned something, please leave me a thumbs up and a comment down below. I'll see y'all in the next video.